I've been reading The Work of the Future, which has some really interesting insights into artificial intelligence, and longtime viewers of the channel know I love talking about population collapse. And I realized that a lot of the fear that we have around artificial intelligence is actually the solution to some of the challenges around population collapse. If the workforce is already shrinking and artificial intelligence is going to eliminate jobs, it might be convenient timing. But it actually goes a lot deeper than that. In order to tie it all together, we're going to talk about the bubonic plague. But before we get to that, let's talk about what's going on right now, which almost certainly affects you. If you're not familiar with population collapse, there's really two important things to understand. The first is that because of dropping fertility rates all across the world, we're in a situation where there's more people aging out of the workforce than there are young people entering it. Especially in the developed world, this means that the workforce is starting to shrink. And second, because of increases in human longevity, we still expect human population to be going up for the next 20 to 30 years, despite the fact that the workforce is shrinking. This means that the supply, workers, is shrinking while the demand, consumers, is still going up. If you want the full version of this, I'll link a video at the end. For now, let's move on to artificial intelligence. The book provides two really unique views into how AI might shape the future economy. People who are optimistic about AI often relate it to other disruptive technologies, like the tractor. Even though the tractor eliminated a lot of jobs in agriculture, it created a lot more. We needed people to produce, repair, and operate all of these tractors. Displaced workers were able to focus on something more productive for society. Farm kids, a valuable labor source for farmers, were able to focus on more things like education. When you look at disruptive technologies like factory automation and the computer, it turns out that they typically create as many jobs as they destroy, and they generally increase the skill set of the working age population. However, artificial intelligence is fundamentally different from all of these in one very important way, which is scalability. If each tractor replaces 10 farm workers, and there's 10 million farm workers across the US, then we still need a million tractors. But if an AI bot can replace 20 people at an accounting firm, that same AI bot can replace 20 people at every accounting firm. If there's 10,000 accounting firms, we don't need 10,000 AI bots. That's an oversimplification, but I think you get the point. AI scales fundamentally different than tractors and factory robots. We've seen this phenomenon before with online retailers. AI isn't the first technology to scale this well, which we'll come back to in a minute. The second unique view is that disruptive technologies go through a 40-year implementation cycle. It takes about 40 years to go from initial application to market dominance, and it's unlikely that AI is going to be any different. If you look at online retail, we're about 25 to 30 years into this cycle. Amazon launched in 1996, and the dot-com crash was in the early 2000s. Everyone understands how fundamentally different the world is because of online retail. Now, I'm not going to get into it here, but the book talks about all of the hurdles and optimizations that it still has to go through. Online retail may have changed the world, but it's not done yet. If you put these two views together, you can draw the conclusion that artificial intelligence may cause a net loss of jobs, but that that will probably occur slowly over the next 40 years. Now, before we jump to the bubonic plague, I think it's interesting to note that 40 years is also about the length of an average human working age, let's say from age 25 to 65. I find it hard to believe that that's a coincidence. As disruptive technologies make certain skill sets less valuable, the labor pool naturally shrinks. And late in that cycle, the few remaining workers become valuable in implementing this new technology because of their unique skill set. The free market makes efficient use of its resources. Now let's jump to the year 1300 and talk about the bubonic plague. The Black Death, a virulent disease, sweeps across Central Asia, Northern Africa, and Europe. These areas lose a third of their population. In major urban areas like Paris, almost 50% of the population dies. The poor and working class are hurt disproportionately hard. In Europe, over a decade, their working age population plummets. None of the infrastructure has changed, but the supply of workers has. Now, you might think that demand would go down during this time, and to a certain extent it did, but you have to understand that this is not a time of plenty. If Europe could produce more food, it would get consumed. Empty fields and idle mills meant people were still going hungry. For the first time in human history, labor had a bargaining chip. It was valuable. 
A lot of people attribute the rise of the Renaissance and the creation of the working or merchant class to this shift in demographics caused by the plague. The human brain and its incredible hands are valuable. And it turns out that robotics, the computer, and even AI are a long way off from replacing them. The workforce is already declining, and it's going to continue to do so for all of the foreseeable future. Just like the plague, the supply of workers is dropping with no similar drop in the demand. We have good reason to believe that artificial intelligence is going to cause a net loss of jobs, but slowly over the next 40 years, which is convenient timing. But the book points out that even the most cutting edge robotics and artificial intelligence are a far cry from replacing the manual dexterity of the human hands and the problem solving ability of the human brain. I'm trying to put those things together and we are well more than 40 years out. The next 40 years is going to be about marrying technology's ability to automate with humans' ability to adapt to problems. The mixture of robotics, artificial intelligence, and humans is what will create the efficiency improvements that we will need to keep up in a world of population collapse. Now, if you want to start from the beginning on population collapse and check out this video, stick around the channel for similar content, and I will talk to you soon.